everyone. It is live with CCO. It's episode number 70. This is where we take questions or pertinent information that's happening in our uh, medical coding arena and kind of casually flesh them out, talk about them. Uh, a great opportunity to uh, just relax and talk about interesting things that's happening in our world. Just a special shout out to one of our fabulous coaches, Darcy. She let us know that she was going to be here with our with her students. So that's fabulous. And, you know, we do get comments a lot and people let us know that they found us because their coding instructor had them look at our videos on YouTube. So we appreciate that. And I always like to uh, think back when I started working with CCO, that's exactly how I got connected with Laureen, the owner of CCO, is that I found these great YouTube videos that were educational that resonated with me and my students were having trouble with e and uh, as I was explaining it. And I said, you know what, let's just look at somebody else explaining it. Maybe it will work better with uh, the way she describes it. And you know what, it did. So I assigned for extra credit and bonus points of the college uh, for them to watch those videos. And sure enough, that she was able to explain it in a way that they understood. And next thing you know, I was working with CCO. Uh, as long as they give CCO attribution, we want everybody to come and see our videos. Live with CCO is a little different and more unique than some of the other uh, webinars that we do every week, and we do multiple in a week. Uh, as that stays up on our YouTube channel. If you're here visiting with us tonight, let us know where you're watching from. I always like looking out of the corner of my eye to see where everybody's at. I know Darcy is on the East Coast. Um, that being said, and kind of reminiscing back in the past, e and is what we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, they have dropped some of the e and changes for 2023. Now, we are not going to go into depth. We're not going to talk uh, uh, more than just a brief overview of what some of the changes are. And we had to expect this happening, these tweaks and changes in e and because the major overhaul was done this past year and uh, it kind of turned everything on its head. So uh, we knew that after a certain amount of time, they would come back and say, okay, this is working. This is not. We need to redefine, reword, add verbiage, clarify these components. And I suspect for the next few years, we will see some changes. There really isn't a lot of changes to you know, in all actuality. In fact, as we get closer to 23, we probably are going to see more changes than what we're seeing here. In fact, there's one code that they haven't even, they told us it was going to be a new code, but they haven't even told us what the code is going to be yet. And, um, uh, you know, that that's okay. However, there's a few things I wanted to bring up. When you get your new 2023 CPT manuals and you look at the guidelines, uh, they will always tell you in the guidelines if something is new. And the way they do that is that they bold within the description the new verbiage, the changed verbiage. So if you're a student and you're curious, if you go back and look at your manual, and you see anything in bold, then you'll know in that descriptionary in the guidelines uh, that that was a change from the previous year. Sometimes it's simple words like they add, you know, or, or uh, you know, just small verbiage, uh, embellish it a little bit, describe it a little bit more. And other times they really change the foundation of what you're doing, like the way we changed in M this past year. In uh, in the past, NM was always a struggle. Now, it's because there were so many components to learn to how to do it. There's leveling and, you know, what's the difference between a 99213 and a 4? 
you know, you always knew what a two was and a five was because that was the least and the most complex patient. You could pretty well figure that out in your head if you had to guess, uh, because, you know, the sicker the patient is, the more diagnoses the patient has, to, has the more workup that the provider does. Of course, that's going to constitute a higher level of evaluation and management and the less, you know, and, and so there was, but there was tweaking in that middle ground that always uh, uh, had people struggling. And when you test, then uh, they want to know that you understand the leveling very well. So it was very precise. And however, I, and I kind of had a love hate relationship with e &M. you know, CPT isn't my favorite code set uh, that I'm sure if you've been watching for very long, you know that extremely well. Uh, however, um, the it, e &M kind of made sense to me differently. I looked at it differently than all of that leveling. I looked at it with the dis disease process in mind versus, okay, what are we doing to the patient and what are all the components? Let's click off all the boxes, uh, you know, and, um, and that, it, that is not the way you do it, but in the real world, it's a lot easier to kind of, um, think of it that way, at least in my brain. And we all know that my brain is a little bit different than everybody else's. But with the major change based on medical decision making and time, they kind of converted to my way of thinking because that's exactly what I was doing. I was looking at the medical decision making and not always necessarily time based, but it was heavily based on the medical decision making and um, thinking, you know, what is the disease and the disease process that the provider's dealing with, uh, uh, and then counting off uh, everything that was applicable. Well, they converted it to this, this new way, which actually makes it so much easier to do e &M. That pendulum has started, I started, said a few years ago, the pendulum swinging in that it's more about what uh, is wrong with the patient than uh, what we're doing to the patient. And that pendulum swung, man, it just hit the wall, blew up the bricks. And now that's the way we do evaluation and management. Tracking uh, is uh, via the medical decision-making and time-based. That being said, as we get ready to look at the changes, note that um, it's not always based on time. Sometimes the providers, when they found this out, they thought, oh, good. I always mark that I, you know, uh, more than 50% of my time was based, you know, on da, 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 da. So I can always, you know, figure out based on how much time I spend with the patient. That's that's not always the best way to go. You're, uh, you will be undercutting your reimbursement and um, uh, that medical decision making almost in every instance is going to be the more valid way to track what your uh, the work that you're doing for your patients. So first let's start uh, talking about the EM deleted codes. Um, there's been several lectures already out and we are going to look at this briefly. I could go in and talk about every single one of these in depth, explain it, but that's what we do at the end of the year when we get ready to switch into the uh, the new year and all of the changes together. We'll highlight this more in depth and we'll uh, stay tuned because we're going to talk about more individual areas uh, with the changes. But for deleted, note that I put in green the codes that were deleted and I uh, put in purple the codes that are going to be used instead. So what they did is they they kind of tweaked it. In in my opinion, uh, I think what they they decided was, hey, we just don't need these codes anymore. They don't fit the new format for medical decision making and time. So let's go ahead and convert it all under this umbrella of these other codes that already exist. And, and which is kind of to be expected as the code said morphs. So the areas that were notable for deleted codes are observation codes, consultation, nursing facility services. That's what all of these uh, cover. Um, I started to go in and pull these codes and what they were in their descriptions. I thought I'm not even going to do that because we're just going over briefly. You can look at this slide. You can um, uh 
pause it and come back and reference it again and look at the codes. Uh, and it's a good stepping stone for you to increase your knowledge base on these codes that they're going to be using instead. Uh, so again, uh, the codes on the left are the codes that are deleted and the codes on the right are going to be used instead that already exist within the code set. And these are observation codes because know that these are like inpatient codes, right? Uh, consultations and nursing facility services. Let's move on. Uh, we also have deleted codes in um, uh, this word that nobody likes to say. And in fact, one of the lectures that I recently attended uh, made a comment about this word. And I say it different than everybody else. I say dissimil uh, domiciliary. And that is not how some people say it. But honestly, I don't think anybody knows how to say it. It was funny that they made a joke about it. They're striking that completely. Rest home, custodial, new and established patient, home care, and prolonged services. Now, I wanted to let you know that um, prolonged services, I believe it's under prolonged services, the 99356 through 99357, which is, you know, two codes, uh, that's going out. And the code that I told you that they haven't even dropped yet the complete code. They haven't told us what it is. Uh, it, uh, I just left that coming soon. They'll tell us by the time um, the manuals get ready to, to uh, when they start coming out. Again, maybe they're tweaking and going to uh, uh, add some extra codes. So uh, they're going to delete these code ranges for these specific areas and Notice what I did here. Um, I wanted to get this kind of nice in a graph, but uh, you know we do we do this with ICD where you use the first three characters and then you um, uh, you know do point dash. There's more characters coming on uh, there, but you know ENM codes and CPT codes don't have. Uh, decimals in them or points, but they do have those first three characters the same. So note where we say the 993, then what that means is that it's 99341, 99342, and 99345. And likewise, second column, 99347 through 50. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of make it easier. I hope that that doesn't look like I tried to throw in modifiers. That is not the case. That's why I put the dot, dot, dot. Um, these are the codes that are going to be replacing, there already exist, the deleted code ranges that follow uh, the areas that are listed on the left. Also, remember, prolonged services last year took a big hit. There was significant expansion and changes for prolonged services. Now that we've had time to get that under their, your belt, they tweaked that little a little bit. And so we'll talk about that again in the future. If you struggle with prolonged services, we, oh, last year, right there at the beginning, when the new codes came out, we did some education on prolonged services by itself. You can probably just check that on our YouTube channel, Medical Coding Cert, and put in the little um, looking glass uh, prolonged services and and see what um, information you can get. It's important that you understand prolonged services. It's, it affects quite a bit as far as ENM goes. Now, uh, Again, we're not going to go into much depth. For revised code, notice inpatient observation, consultations, nursing facilities, and home residents. For all of those, and, and most of the stuff we're talking about is inpatient. Now, there is outpatient, but uh, a lot of this stuff is uh, in facility that the changes happened. It's important for inpatient and observation. Go back and look at that. Um, uh, 
eight and 24 hour rule, meaning, you know, like the patient had to stay at least eight hours and not more than 24 before you went in from observation inpatient and everything. Go back and review that. Uh, make yourself a note. Make sure you understand that because that kind of applies with some of this uh, inpatient observation rules. However, what they did was they made a few little nuance changes and uh, for all of inpatient and observation, consultation, nursing facilities, and home residents, we are now using the history and exam that the provider does, uh, the, the medical decision-making and time, okay? Uh, however, for emergency rooms with ENM, you don't do time. So it's the history exam and medical decision making because you really can't do time in the emergency room. There's too much going on. It's its own unique little world. Uh, so that is different. Could they test you on things like that? I think absolutely they could. Uh, so again, they've made a few revisions in the code verbiage. I could have listed all of the codes out, but um, that is not necessary. Just note that there are some slight verbiage changes within this area. Prolonged time. It's noteworthy that uh, they did make a change for prolonged services. In the past, with that recent change, that it was anything um, over 15 minutes gave you another 15 minutes, no longer the case, right? 15 minutes is your magic time. That's the window. So you have to have at least 15 minutes and you have to have for the next 15 minutes, another 15 minutes. So if you have 32 minutes, you got 15, 15, and two, the two doesn't count, okay? You, you're just going to be able to get two units in there. You're not going to be able to count for that extra two minutes. Very noteworthy. I'm sure that they will end up testing you on that uh, because it is a major change than the thought process that we've always used before. Medical decision making, my favorite part of MDM, medical decision making and EM work. Uh, three key components that uh, you have to be mindful of for medical decision making number and complexity of problems addressed, which this just makes sense, right? If you have a patient that comes in and they have a stuffy nose, um, that's it, they have a stuffy nose. Maybe they have a toothache. Maybe they have cerumen in their ears. One thing. They just have cerumen in their ears because they can't hear. That's one problem. Easily fixed. Complexity, very low. However, if you have a patient that has COPD, has a, a colored sputum, shortness of breath, a very low pulse ox, long-term oxygen use, they happen to be a diabetic on insulin and a fib with anticoagulants, Okay, that is a much more complicated patient, right? So not only are you dealing with um, a lung, endocrine, uh, and medication that has to be monitored and supervised, that's just a whole package of a complication, uh, complicating problem. And there'll be multiple problems that have to be addressed with that patient. You can't just give them a specific medication to take care of one diagnosis and not consider how it will affect the other diagnoses that the patient has or the medication that they're taking. And then throw in cognitive um, ability to um, uh, be able to take their own medication and, and so on and so forth. So uh, again, number and complexity of problems addressed is actually a key component. Amount and or complexity of data to be reviewed and analyzed. Uh, if you have a patient that recently had a PTF study, um, they you need to look at their A1C. They had an echo done and there was a ectasia in the aorta. Uh, there was structural change and now in their lungs for COPD and they have uh, been di 
the radiologist stated they had panlobular uh, emphysema now. Uh, you know, all of this stuff is going to uh, bump up that medical decision making. Risk of complication and or morbidity and mortality of patient management. If if it means that if you, if can that patient get better on their own? They had cerumen in their ear. Could they get better on their own? Yeah, you could just tell them to go get that Debrock stuff poured in their ears or stool softener even. They will put um, in their ears and they could probably get better on their own. Uh, however, the other example of the patient that is coughing up green sludge out of their lungs and just got a new diagnosis of panlobular emphysema versus COPD that they were before and their pulse ox is off. And, you know, uh, I ha uh, saw a chart the other day where the patient had um, been using their oxygen at night through their CPAP and it fell and broke off the little end part. Uh, so they didn't use the oxygen anymore with their CPAP. It's like, oh, that's probably, we can't just stop that. And um, so again, these are risk of complications, morbidity and mortality. Um, you know, what's the chances of a, a patient that's a COPD or that isn't using their oxygen when they sleep and they're on a CPAP, right? Uh, so that is uh, absolutely a complicated patient. Medical decision-making is going to be higher. And remember, they only have to have two of the three components to be able to, to raise that medical decision-making. Continued with medical decision-making, they added and tweaked a little bit of the verbiage not much. And in fact, we'll talk about it more in the future. I'd like to do another video on uh, just medical decision making for e &M alone. So look for that in the future. Uh, but they, uh, again, it's almost not noteworthy to mention it right away. Uh, it's because it's so obvious that because it's bolded. So number and complexity of problems addressed, date reviewed and analyzed. There was a little tweak there and risk of complication of patient management. Little tweak in the verbiage there. Uh, again, easy to follow. Now, that all being said, I know it feels like I rushed through all of this, but we really wanted to give you an overview of a brief overview of what to look forward to in the e and for 2023. There is probably going to be some more changes, I'm suspecting, uh, than what was already dropped. Um, so we will stay on top of that. Also, as we near the end of the year and we get closer to uh, October is always a big time to do um, the new changes in the code sets, uh, all the code sets, ICD-10-CM, PCS, uh, CPT, and even HICSPICS. We will bring those to you and we're going to bust out these individual little changes. And I'd like to be able to give you some examples of documentation and verbiage of how these changes will affect uh, your providers and the way that you code. Also, I'd like to be able to give you some tips on how to educate your providers. Not, you know, it's one thing that uh, you are coding for them, but if you need, you, that's not enough. You need to be able to also educate your providers on these changes so that their documentation can reflect truly what's going on in their heads um, uh, for proper reimbursement, but, but most of all for um, continuity of care for the patient themselves. So stay tuned. Uh, we'll go over more changes in depth, and I hope you enjoyed this brief little uh, taste of what 2023 looks like in e &M. It's just going to get easier, guys. This is all coming together to my way of thinking. Hmm. I hope you enjoyed it. So don't forget, you can always learn more about what we do by going to cco.us. Our YouTube channel is Medical Coding Cert. If you go over there or if you're watching on YouTube or LinkedIn um, or even 
uh, Facebook, you can click that little bell and every time we have a new lecture coming up, it'll notify you or best of all, subscribe. Uh, we also have our own internal way to notify you that things are happening at cco.us forward slash notify. That is truly the best way to stay on top of everything that we're doing. We're hopping over here at CCO. We enjoy what we do, and we hope that's reflected in the education that we provide and all of the free stuff that we hope that is valuable to you. If you want something specific, uh, again, you can let us know by doing topic requests, and that's at cco.us forward slash topic hyphen request. See that up there on the screen. If there's something that you want us to unpack and talk more about, we don't mind doing the research. We will do that and it helps us as well to get a feel for what our community is needing. So see you next time, guys. Thanks. Bye. Do you need more medical certification and business training? Learn more at www.cco.us.